Ah, good morning. Mm. I think it's time we do a little fusion tutorial and I'm gonna show you how you can make your very own keychains to, well, for me, I gave them to my old coworkers. So uh, I'm Joel, this is 3D Printing Nerd. 3D printing is fun and it's not just low poly Pikachus all the time. Sometimes it's functional things. Sometimes it's functional things that are also fun to look at. And this is an After Effects keychain. So After Effects was the team at Adobe I was on before. Great program, great team. I wanted to make something for my old team after switching to being a full-time content creator that that's something they could remember me by, but at the same time provided me a way of making content. And keychains were the way to go. Uh, After Effects logo itself has a light purple surrounding border and the letters themselves are light purple as well with darker purple in the middle. The keychain itself, it has a little ring that a larger ring is attached to. If you attached everything to the ring that was on this, it wouldn't be sturdy. Having two rings is the best way to go. Look at that, two rings. So how do we do this? Well, in Fusion, we have to design a model that's built for multiple colors. We have to pick the right purples, and then we have to print it out on the Prusa multi-material machine. Let's get to it. Well, here we are at my desk, and you can see in Fusion, I actually have it all designed. It's got the After Effects icon. So how I designed it is for two color printing, because there's two different purples that are in there. Uh, the first is this kind of base layer. So I don't want, uh, I don't want it to, show through the bottom, meaning I don't want it to just be A and E and a border up from the bottom. I wanted it to have a base. And so the AE exists on top, but not at the bottom. And then that layer or that body that exists around the letters and in the border is a second one. And you can see it's not down on the ground plane right there. See, there's that space right there. So how do we create this? It's not that hard, but we're gonna do it from scratch. Let's see if I can recreate it. First, you want to bring in SVG. I'm going to choose the little AE app icon SVG. And I'm going to put it on the ground plane. There it is. Well, first, before we dive into that, uh, to get an SVG, what I did, I mean, I worked at Adobe, I used Photoshop to crop the After Effects logo because it had a, a, a drop shadow on it. So I cropped that out. I then brought that image into Adobe Illustrator and I did an image trace, which gave me vectors. I then did a file save as SVG 1.1. You can accomplish a lot of the same stuff using GIMP and Inkscape. Those are both free to use tools that can give you the same thing. Uh, this tutorial though, I'm not getting into any of the image conversion to SVG files. I'm just going to assume that you can find an SVG. Uh, you can also bring an image into Fusion and then trace it using the uh, sketch tools, but I'm also not gonna show you how to do that. So we've got the SVG in. Uh, each one of these boom, 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 is five millimeters, and I want it to be essentially a 50 millimeter square. Uh, so I'm gonna shrink it down a bit. There we go. I'm gonna go right to, let's see if I can do this. Come on, no, no, I'm just gonna call it good. I'm gonna call it, uh, whatever, okay. <laughs> It's on that line-ish. Uh, it's close enough. Again, we're not dealing with hyper-accurate dimensionality, if that's even a word, because we're not trying to fit something into something else. This is just for the model, so I'm gonna I'm gonna hit okay. There it is. Looks great. Now, what we need to do, uh, because we we want the base to be solid, but we don't want the letters and the border to go all the way to the bottom. So we need to create a base, and for that, we need to draw essentially uh, a square-ish shape to go that follows the border it follows the border but and this is through trial and error here's what i realized when i brought in that svg it didn't snap to origin it snapped to here and when you're zoomed out a bit when you're zoomed out a bit and you're drawing a square it's going to snap to the origin so what i do is i zoom in i'm going to first create a new sketch New sketch. Here we go. And it'll be on this plane. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to click here. And then I'm going to zoom out. And I'm going to drag it all the way to the bottom. I'm going to zoom in a bit. And I'm just going to lock it in. Okay. And now I can stop that sketch. This really is it's two sketches. It's not too difficult at all. Now we're going to get to the extrusion parts of it. So what we need to do 
I'm gonna turn off this top one, just so I have this. I'm gonna click it, I'm gonna hit E for extrude, and I'm gonna hit one for one millimeter. Super easy. I'm now going to click this one, this sketch. I'm gonna hit E for extrude, and let's see, I'm gonna pick it here, here, and here. Now I'm gonna hit two, and I'm gonna say join. So what that does is it joins the one millimeter square that we created here to essentially those parts of the sketch that we extruded up. There are far easier ways to do this. In fact, why don't we do that? Let's just see what happens. This should be fun. So we've got our square. We've got our square. Let's hit E, select the square and do two millimeters. Now I'm gonna turn on this sketch right here, sketch one, and I'm gonna hit E, and I believe I can, uh, let's see, I'm gonna select this, 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 I'm gonna make it one millimeter tall, but I'm gonna offset it by one millimeter. And you can kind of see in this graphic representation here, it's not touching the ground plane, and so it's just going to cut out the parts that we don't need. And there it is right there. So I hope you, I hope those two different ways of getting to this uh, made it easy for you. Now what we can do is extrude this body. We hit E, selected this, 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 and I'm gonna go one. And then I'm, instead of join, I'm gonna say new body. So here's what happened there. Because I clicked on the 3D model itself and hit E for extrude, then it started at the top of the model and it gave us, well, it gave us this new body here. Let's, uh, there it is. So it gave us that new body. There is another way to do that. In fact, let's go back. And what we can do is on this, we can select this sketch. We can select these parts here Hit E for extrude. I'm going to go one millimeter and then I'm going to use that offset plane by one millimeter and instead of join, it's going to be a new body. I'm going to hit OK. And we've accomplished the same thing. There you go. Well now we need to find a place to put that little small ring through and that's going to go up here in the corner. It is going to be, I mean we can turn it all on. I'm going to turn off the sketches. We need to create a line and I'm gonna do it right on this face. I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna go out five millimeters. I'm gonna hit L for line and I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna go out five millimeters. I'm gonna hit L for line. I'm gonna to get to here and I'm gonna go snap to here. Okay, and that's it and I can stop that sketch. Because we drew that on top of the 3D model, when I hit E for extrude and I select this, I can pull down through the model, it automatically selects cut, and then I can hit OK. So now we have a little place to put that ring for the keychain. Last, let's add some fillets, and we'll do it on the four corners. If this is a keychain, you generally don't want something that's too sharp on the corners in your pockets, or else it'll poke you in the leg, or if uh, it's in your purse, it'll poke other things in your purse. You don't want to do that. So do a 0.5 fillet on the side. It's not much, but it just rounds off that corner to make it uh, make it a little bit easier to carry. All right, now, now we need to be able to save it out. So what the easiest way to do is in the body's selection over here, just make sure you have the body chosen that you want to save out. And so I have this body chosen and I'm gonna go up here to the component that's not named. I'm gonna go save as STL. I'm gonna hit okay, and then I'm gonna save it out. I've already built this, I've already saved it out. Uh, but that's how you would then save that one. And then for the other one, just select the bodies that you want to be a part of that STL. So even though the bodies aren't necessarily connected together, you still get the ability to save them out as one STL, which makes it easier for printing in multiple colors. So then I'm gonna go here, save as STL, I'm gonna hit okay, and then I can save it out. And that's how you do that. Let's, well, I'll load up the Prusa multi-material slicer and I'll show you how to configure that. 
All right, this here is the Prusa edition of Slicer, or as Tom likes to say, Slick 3R, and it is uh, enabled for multi-material extrusion. So first, what I'm gonna do is add, I'm gonna take my dark color and my light color, and I'm gonna hit open. Slicer's gonna recognize that there are more than one model coming in. It's gonna ask if they represent a single object having multiple parts, and it does. So I bring it in there, and look, oops, there is my, there's my model right there. And it just names it one of the STLs that you brought in. But what you can do is double click. Okay, and you can now start to assign things within the object. So the dark color, we'll set the darker purple on extruder one, and the light color we will set on extruder two. So now here's one through four. Let's pick the color for one, and I think we said the lighter purple. Is that, I think that was right, the lighter purple on extruder one and the darker purple on extruder two. And when we slice it and then we go preview. Did I get my colors mixed up? <laughs> I think I might have got my colors mixed up because I think the lighter goes on the other side. And I'm sure you're screaming at me now. So what we can do is go back to dark color. We can either change the colors, we can change the colors or we can change this I'll go up here so I'll change that to a, a, a darker purple and I will change this to a, uh, a lighter purple <laughs> not too shabby right and as you as you scroll through it'll show you what it's making because it's only two millimeters high it's it's solid plastic but that's fine because we're not dealing with this giant model we're dealing with something that's small and it's essentially just a few layers uh we can change from 0.35 we can change to 0.2 we can slice it up and then it should actually show some infill there it is because we reduce the height of the layers then it has to do more layers and according to the settings within the slicer more layers if it's already taken care of bottom layers and top layers that are solid and there's layers in the middle of course those are going to be infill but this is, uh, this is something for a bunch of coworkers, and I'm, I'm gonna have to print like 30 of these things. So what I can do is increase the copies and just, okay, I'll set number of copies. We'll go nine more. And then I can hit arrange. Prusa Slicer doesn't seem to recognize that it can't put models on the purge block. <sighs> Joseph. So here's what I'll do. So it's easy enough to, um, bring these around but what's really cool is because you already designated the settings for that one model the settings copy over to the copies that you put on the build plate so if I slice it and then I hit preview they all adhere to the settings that we gave for the original model now it's just up to us to print it on the Prusa multi-material machine Whee! The Prusa Mark II multi-material machine uses a PEI sheet for the build plate and things stick to it extremely well. You can use uh, like uh, some bed adhesion additives like glue stick or magic goo or the uh, Printer Pro spray like Tom uses to act as a release agent. But otherwise, as long as you pre-clean it with some isopropyl alcohol every once in a while, things just stick and then they pop off and it is Awesome. And the Prusa multi-material machine did a great job with these models. They look fantastic. Let's put them together. Look at that. We printed a stack. Look at that stack of keychains. Look at them. There they all are. Yay. Yay. Most of them for the turned out great. Like, like some of them, some of them are perfect. Uh, there are some that had a little bit of a, an issue here. You can see it kind of right there in the corner. A little bit of an issue. We'll give it to people that, that just don't care. So, to replicate this one, with the bad one off to the side, we first need to grab ourselves one of the small rings. Small rings. And then we have to grab ourselves big rings. So, let's take this one. We're gonna take a small ring, and I have fingernails, but there's probably better ways of doing this other than fingernails. And you... Slip it in right there. There we go. And that gets the small ring in. And now we got to get the big ring to attach to the small ring. Fingernail to split it open. Twist. Spin. Here we go. That's it. We've got a keychain here. Look at that. And it's nice and sturdy. 
Uh, the, the border itself holds well. I think it's a solid enough model to where it'll work in a pocket. Let me check it out. Yep. Well, I've got a bunch of these to put together. Uh, give me a moment. 2,000 years later. There we go. I mean, it wasn't too bad. I ended up getting the needle nose pliers to, to open things up. Here's the pile that I have of these. I do need to mention that uh, these purples were provided by Matter Hackers. So the, the darker purple is the Matter Hackers Build Series PLA, and the lighter purple is the Pro Series PLA. I reached out to Rhonda at Matter Hackers. What up, Rhonda? And I said, hey, I need some purples. And I gave her the artwork and so she set it up. So big thanks to Rhonda and Matter Hackers for sponsoring the filament for this project. Big thanks to my coworkers at After Effects for being awesome. I'll get a more of, I'll get some more of the, the, the larger rings, I guess. The larger rings. Uh, I will keep this one for myself because it's the ugly one that didn't turn out so well. I hope that taught you a little bit of something. I, I really wanted to showcase how easy it is to make a homemade gift using Fusion 360, some vector outlines and some PLA filament and a 3D printer. That was easy. All right, you know what? Share this with someone who you think might like it. If you'd like to support the channel or anything I do as a content creator, there are a bunch of links down in the description. Hit up those if you need 3D printers, filaments, or you just wanna buy me a coffee. Uh, last but not least, don't forget to Hug each other more, because I love you guys. As always, high five.